I remember really specifically watching it like at a really, really young age. And actually, like I was very scared, but I think I was excited by how scared I was. And I remember the next day going out and like imagine I was going to get pulled and feeling great by a scary clown. I think I was excited that you could feel like you could feel something so much from television. Hello, guys. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Hey, having us. First off, I want to start off by congratulating you for already being renewed for season two. That's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a 33-year-old man when I became a vampire. We're a family. She is poisoning you against me. You two have each other. Who am I supposed to love? We'll be together 10,000 nights, 100,000. I think we all, at some point in our lives, pretended to be a vampire biting someone's neck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious how you prepared to like actually like sink your teeth into those moments on screen. I feel like initially we didn't really think about it, mm. and then we started having to do it mm. fairly regularly. Mm. And we're like, this is really weird. It's a lot more intimate than a sex scene, I think. Like doing it, it's like quite an extreme thing to do. Yeah. It's also like trying to work out like how much blood you like ingest per bite. Like you know, if you're draining somebody's entire body of blood, it's like a, quite a lot of fluid to be drinking. And how long does it go for? And like how much? How like what's the kind of draw? And, and Anne Rice does talk about it like these epic sort of draws that they take. So it was sort of like making sure that that translated as well. Um, so it, there was a fair amount of thought that went into it. And sometimes those scenes would just go on and on and on and you'd be like, <laughs> are they going to call cut because this is going forever? Well, that was an epic draw. Yeah, I, I had a wrist hickey actually by the end of it. I had a neck hickey. Yeah, so. yeah. Not, hickey hickey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Payback hickey. My friend and Xfinity's LGBTQ plus editor, Scott, has been very excited for this series. And he wanted me to ask you the following question. Why do you think we see so many gay vampire characters in modern TV and film? Is it because of their beautiful skin, keen fashion sense, and love of nightlife? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we take that as our answer? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was a moment um, early in the premiere episode where Eric Bogosian's character, Daniel Malloy, pulls out an old boom box to play a cassette tape. And I'll admit, I still have a cassette player. I have a VHS player somewhere that I can't bring myself to throw out. Can either of you think of anything in your home right now that is so outdated, but you can't bring yourself to get rid of it? I mean, I have a, um, a old Walkman, cassette Walkman that I have been carrying around for ages um, that's still in the box. It's still like in the in the 80s box that it came from. Um, and I have no idea. And it's still got the headphones that are, came with it and they're like crumbling and disintegrating. And I, I, and I have a bag of cassette tapes um, that I used to make as a kid. I'd go on the radio and like record like the songs and things so I could have a um, so I have like a mixtape of the songs that I like. And I've got this bag of those tapes and I don't know why I keep them because none of them. Really no, I do. I used to do the same and I, and I so wish that I kept them. Oh yeah. I really, really wish I kept them. I did, I, I, a while ago I bought an old car and it only had a tape player in it. I thought, oh, this is going to be the time I get to listen to these tapes. And it was just <laughs> awful. <laughs> All of it was awful. <laughs> Closing time. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've still, I've got, um, I've got uh, all my Ninja Turtles. I still have them from when I was a child, wow. and I've also got uh, this very paint chipped uh, Cyclops toy, um, and all of the accessories are gone, but um, I still have that. I have quite a lot of toys actually that I kept. And do you remember Mighty Max? Mm. Yeah, my, yeah. yeah. So I've got like this green. It's like a might. It's a dragon, mm. but it's a mountain as well. And you open it. They're like. They're like Polly Pockets. Oh, but I had Mighty Max 100%. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but not, I don't have any of the figures. It's just the playset. And that's like, yeah. Yeah, because they were, they were tiny. Just in your... I put all of these things up in my office. Oh. They're, all, they're on my shelf. I like looking at them. Mm. Jacob, I was not prepared to see you tap dance so beautifully in that first episode. Is that a skill you already possessed or something you had to learn? 
no, it's something that we had to learn. We had how many weeks did we have? Like yeah, me and a month of prep, but but yeah, yeah. That, I got COVID, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I had to isolate. Um, I, would, I didn't have any symptoms, thankfully, but um, so I had to then do all of my lessons remotely uh, in my house in New Orleans. And this on your board, right? Yeah, I, so I had like some some plywood on the floor, so and uh, my tap shoes, and yeah, we had like three weeks <laughs> after that to just keep practicing. But and with respect to um, to the the doubles. They had two uh, tap dancing doubles that they sent home before we shot the scene. Didn't even use and them. So all of the tapping you see in the show is, is me and Stephen, and we we learned most of it over Zoom. Amazing. <laughs> it's so hard because tap is all about sound. <laughs> the, the the lag is awful. <laughs> Sam, was there anything you had to learn uh, specifically for this series? French, um, Italian, um, piano, piano, um, singing. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit. It was a, it was a bit. <laughs> uh, I was taken off guard by how violent the show gets at a certain point and uh, and bloody. And I was reminded of one of my earliest memories of being frightened by a TV show or movie, and it was a vampire. Uh, and I was curious if you remember the first TV show or movie that scared you as a child. I, I, um, I had a babysitter when I was about 10 or 11. No, younger than that, much younger than that, like six or seven. And, um, and she put on it. And I remember, I remember really specifically watching it like at a really, really young age and feeling like it was very wrong. Um, but I just vividly remember it. And actually, like I was very scared, but I think I was excited by how scared I was. And I remember the next day going out and trying to like pretend like I was, um, his name's Timmy, isn't he? He gets dragged onto the grave. Georgie. Georgie. Yeah. Yeah, and like trying to sail a sailing boat and like imagine I was going to get pulled and to the great by a scary clown. So, I mean, it, it left a positive impact on me, but probably, probably <laughs> quite deranged as a human being. So. Okay. <laughs> um, I think I was excited that you could feel like you could feel something so much from television. There's like a stop motion wind in the willows that uh, is gorgeous. I watched it, I watched it recently, but um. Just something about stop motion is like just terrifies me about like a particular period of like of stop motion filmmaking where it's kind of jerky, mm. but like it was still more advanced than say like in the sixties or like it wasn't Gumby level, but it also wasn't like um, Coraline. There's like a sweet spot that just scares the living daylights out of me. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and uh, I love the show and can't wait for people to see it. I offer for your journalistic pleasures my life story. So, how long have you been dead? The year was 1910. My business was desire. Let me introduce you to Mr. Lestat de Leoncourt. I know who you are, sir. We're destined to be very good friends. I'm assuming you only met at night. It's New Orleans. Days are for sleeping off the previous evening's damage. That's your thing, then? You like to watch? I've been watching you for some time now. I can swap this life of shame. Swap it out for a dark gift. Let the tale seduce you. Just as I was seduced. There was a boy. He was my murderer, my mentor, my lover, and my maker. A very strange and chatted boy. It was as if I could finally receive the secrets of existence. Your eyes. I could search window. I was not yet ready to hunt, but desperate to feed. It's best to let the food come to you. You're not welcome in this home. This is how it has to be. I don't want to kill people. You're a vampire. I could not save myself. 
but I could save her. She'll be what? Her daughter. We're a family. She is poisoning you against me. You two have each other. Who am I supposed to love? This is not a life! You took my life! We'll be together 10,000 nights, 100,000. Ready to begin the adventure of our lives. My companions in immortality.